Hello fellow classmates, how you doing today? The book I wanted to talk about for my book talk is called They Call Me Coach by John Wood. They Call Me Coach is a mix of an autobiography and a book uh, written about legendary NCAA basketball coach John Wooden. Uh, John Wooden was a legendary coach, um, arguably one of the best of all time. He won seven NCAA t titles in a row and a total of ten CAA titles throughout his career, along with many other great accomplishments such as undefeated seasons and other things that have never been matched. In the book, it also discusses things that he created and tools he used, such as his pyramid of success, and also his life in general, the life lessons he learned. For example, um, you know, from meeting his wife, Nellie, uh, onto his coaching career where he got a start, uh, his personal struggles, and other things that he's gone through. Uh, the main characters in the book are obviously Coach John Wooden, uh, his wife, Nellie, and pretty much mostly all the players that he came in contact with throughout his career. Players, uh, fellow coaches that shaped him, uh, alumni from universities and other such people. Um, the reason I chose this book is because it provides a lot of great lessons that can be learned uh, through him and the trials he went through and the things that he learned. Um, you can see one such lesson in the very first uh, page of the book and that's what I'd like to start off with reading on the uh, first page of the book. As I turned away from the post-game press conference and headed down that long corridor in Kansas City towards the dressing room, my feet and spirits dragged for a while. I looked forward to congratulating the team on their victory. My thoughts were also on Fred Slaughter. What was he feeling at this moment? Throughout the entire season, Fred had started every game. He had a brilliant year. Fred was a totally unselfish player with great team devotion and was fre frequently asked to do things for which a player receives little public attention. Even though he was short for a college center, barely six feet, five inches tall, Fred was the blocker, screener, and rebounder, things seldom seen and appreciated by the crowd. But in this final game for the championship with Duke, he had gotten off to a bad start. As the game moved along, it got worse instead of better. Finally, a change had to be made, so I pulled Fred and put in Doug McIntosh, and Doug did such a fine job that I left him in until the game was ours. While I walked along toward the dress room, George Mariotti's words were ringing in my mind. Who can ask more of a man than giving all within his span? Giving all, it seems to me, is not so far from victory. And yet I knew that Fred was not alone in his disappointment, having grown up not too far away in Topeka, Kansas, where he had attended high school. He was well aware that the crowd had been pretty well sprinkled with slaughter, slaughter relatives and fans. Pushing open the dressing room door, I ran right into Fred. He had evidently been waiting there for me. Coach, he said, before someone, before someone gets the wrong impression, I want you to know that I understand. You have to leave Doug in you had to leave Doug in there because he played so well, and I didn't. I wanted to play in the worst way, but I do understand. And if anyone else says I was upset, it's not true. Disappointed, yes, but upset, no. And I was very happy for Doug. You know, there are a lot of peaks and valleys in every coach's life, but this was the peak, the ultimate. We had won our first and my first NCAA title by whipping Duke 98-83 to and closed out the 1964 season with a perfect 30-0 record. But my concern for Fred had damaged all that until this moment. Now I felt really great. That's just a tip of the iceberg of this book. And if you're interested in reading a great book, I recommend it. Thank you.